Old Max, we go everywhere together. Right, boy? At Pet Stuffers, we know there's nothing like a relationship between a man and his dog. Sometimes you just can't let go. Max, you didn't eat your food. That's the second week in a row. Max? When the unspeakable happens, just put your four-legged friend in the refrigerator or freezer. Then call Pet Stuffers. We'll be there within a week to pick him up, and in less than a month, he'll be back as good as new. Through an ancient Egyptian miracle process called taxidermy, you and your best friend will always be together. Yeah, that's a good dog. Pet Stuffers, when you just can't let go. And coming soon, grandparents forever. Hiya! The key to feeling great is looking great, and the way to look great is to have great hair. That's great. Take your hair higher. Take your hair to the limit. With sissy spritz, when you're clubbing or sticking your head out of a stretch limo sunroof, you want to know your hair is performing to the limit. Higher. Gonna get higher than the sky. With Sissy Spritz, it's hair for the future, not the past. When you have great hair, people know you're a winner. Gonna fly on my own hair tonight. Sissy Spritz may cause dry mouth, dilated pupils, paranoia, heart palpitations, and nosebleeds, but your hair will be great. Hiya. This is Kate Chat. Welcome back to the show. I'm Amy Schechenhausen, and next up, we're going to be interviewing someone with a lot to say for herself. A woman who pretended to be a man and then wrote a book about it. I haven't read it, but I'm going to pretend I did. She's professor of anthrosociology and women's studies at the University of Vice City. And her name is Michaela Krapis. Krapitus. Michaela. Michaela. Hi. Welcome to KChat. Hello. Hi. So, Michaela, you're a teacher. If you mean professor, yes, I have a doctorate. Teachers are homely women who make minimum wage to keep the teenage boys off the streets during the day. I am very intelligent, and I'd rather talk about that. I'm trying to sell my book. Okay. Now, it says here you wanted to be a man so much, you dressed up like one. Well, that's a load of crap, my dear. More misogynistic propaganda. I hate men. Can't bear them. I think they're a complete waste of time and space, quite frankly, and a disaster for the planet. Me too. I just got dumped. Oh, well, it is unfortunate you measure your self-worth in relation to a man, my dear. Look at you. You could be an attractive girl. If you did some physical labor, cut your hair short, grew out your body hair, and wore boots, for example, you mustn't get sucked into their heteropatriarchy. But I like dating. Having someone buy you dinner is great. Well, we'll come back to you and your problems, accepting who you really are. Let's talk about me a bit more. Okay, so tell me about your book. You hate men a lot, and you dressed up like one, and now you've written a book about it, right? More or less. As I said, I'm very intelligent, so I don't expect you to understand, my dear, but I'll try to keep it simple. I've always been fascinated with the world of men. Revolted, of course, but fascinated. Now, as an academic, I can get paid to write a book about pretty much anything, as long as I give it a complicated title. Are you with me, gorgeous? Ooh, I think so. Good. Then hold my hand. It helps me think. No! Okay, okay, sorry. Don't be so weird. God, everywhere I go, just like the university won't let me display my beautiful and sensual woodcuts in the student comments, it makes me so angry! Where was I? You were talking about yourself? Oh, of course. The ego is a dangerous thing, especially in my case. I'm a Jungian. Anyway, so what I did was dress up like a man and enter into the man world. I can tell you it was more horrifying than I imagined. What did you do? Well, the first chapter, I was a roofer. These sexists spend all day on a roof talking about us, Amy. I was expected to sit around and talk about what I had done to women. Of course, I had to, so as not to blow my cover. So what's the name of your book? Yes, as mentioned hitherto, my book has a very, very obtuse title. Being and Singing. From Freud to the Building Sites, A Woman's Journey into the Male Psyche. Huh? What? I'll admit it's not very catchy, but academia is not about getting to the point. It's about exploration. Okay. Wow, I'm learning a lot today. Yeah, so I entered the world of men, in disguise, of course. I was dressed like a man. Okay, and you haven't changed back? What? What did you say? You're still dressed like a man. No, I'm not. These are my normal clothes. Amy, for God's sake, don't fall prey to the patriarchy's evil fashion schemes! Oh, sorry. Anyway, I learned a lot when I was a man. Did you know, for example, that during my time as a steel worker in Pittsburgh, I learned that men sometimes speak crudely about women when they are out of earshot? 
I was horrified. Or that men regard some women, like you, Amy, as mere sex toys, things for their amusement. Unbelievable! Or that men actually find sports interesting. It's appalling. And they run the world, my pretty. Oh, yes, they run the world. They do? Yeah. Look at Reagan. Look at Thatcher. Look at Gorbachev. While we stay home and bake cookies. Well, screw that, sweetheart. Yes, I agree. Good. Don't bake a cookie. Smash him in the face with a baking tray instead. He's a brainless dolt. He's a man. Did you know men enjoy looking at pictures of naked women? It's called pornography. It's sick and foul. I'm giving a talk about it this weekend at the Women's Center. That's women with a Y. Uh, I think you spelled it wrong. Are you a woman? Three of the five letters that make up your description are M-A-N. You're too dependent on men, Amy. That's why I don't call myself a woman, Amy. Um, okay. I bet this radio station is owned by a man. White male conservatives monopolize the media, selecting right-wing blondes to propagate conservatism. I don't have blonde hair. Not yet, Amy. Not yet. Did you know men drink beer and smoke cigarettes and wear hats? Uh, yeah? Yeah, well, you must have read my book. <laughs> I discovered a lot of things. I was also a policeman and an untrained brain surgeon, and they're all the same. All women haters. But just because men like sports and hats doesn't mean they hate women, does it? You self-hating fool! Of course it does! The media, meaning you, falsely portrays feminists as bra burners, outdated, combat boot-wearing bad mothers. Why don't you take your top off right now, Amy? Huh? Tell them you won't be censored anymore! No! I'm getting a little freaked out here. Uh, they, uh, hit the, let's... You and we'll teach you how to make beds, march in squares, shine shoes, clean bathrooms, kill a man with your bare hands, and do it all with pride. The military teaches you all the skills you'll need later in life. Call 1-800-BE-A-HERO and become a real man today. Why are you waving your hands? Up? Oh, I'm supposed to hit the other commercial. This fall, a new hard-hitting police drama is coming to Friday night. He was a well-to-do cop transferred to a troubled precinct downtown. His new partner is a space traveler with a passion for justice. It's Yuppie and the Alien. Look, you might vaporize dissidents in Alpha Centauri, but in this precinct, we do it by the book. I'm so terribly sorry, Captain. Duh, Gugan sorry. Don't miss this one-of-a-kind police drama. They're fighting crime the hard way. In designer clothes, with a quarter of a million dollar sports car and a UFO. Partner, let's go cruise in the car and look moody. One tough downtown precinct. Two outsiders doing things their way. Yuppie and the Alien on VBC. Hi, I'm BJ Smith, tight end for the Vice City Mamas and proud proprietor of BJ's Used Autos. Cars from all over America come to find a new home in Florida, just like you. I moved here after the draft. Football, uh, not Vietnam, even though they do have a lot in common. I noticed there was one thing missing from this great town, a celebrity-endorsed used car shop. That's why I founded BJ's Used Autos. Every one of these beauties is freshly painted. They look brand new. We have new models coming in every morning, usually around 2 a.m. We can get you anything. And if you see a car of your dreams, tell us. We can acquire it for you. I've taken the skills I've learned as a pro football player to the used car business. Smash, grab, and run like hell. BJ's Used Autos. I'm tackling low prices with hot cars. If for some reason you'd like to speak to Michaela Crapper, just give her a call on KChat. Who's on the line? Michaela, hi. Peace, sister. I'm wearing trousers. I haven't shaved or waxed in nine months. I left my broken-hearted husband and baby behind. Now I'm living in a commune with a series of life partners, having quite simple, amazing experiences. I got my inspiration from a lecture you gave last year. Thank you so much. You taught me a lot. Yes, good, sweetheart. But ask yourself, are you doing enough? It sounds to me like you're living a lie. Your life is still very man-centric. You're still justifying yourself by the I am not rather than the I am principle. I mean, really. You might as well make his bed and clean his litter tray, for God's sake. It's half-hearted fools like you who give feminism a bad name. But uh, I, I even attacked my brother with a bread knife. You show pony, prom queen, cheerleader, skirt wearer. You see, Amy, that's the thing about people. They're so half-hearted. 
pick and mix, not prepared to carry out their threats. That woman, that lady, as I bet she likes to be known, is really a self-hater, a failure in the man's world. Yeah, why, I bet she's never even attacked a man with a vat of boiling oil. But she said she tried to kill her brother. Don't argue with me. I write books. Okay, next caller. Michaela, I'm a huge fan. Are you? Yes, you've really changed my life. Before I heard you speak a couple of times, I was getting into the feminist movement, but in sort of a silly way. Really? Yeah, you know, burning my bra, beating a policeman, shooting my dad and stuff. Just playing around, you know. I didn't really understand the feelings I was having. Ah, I know, the wearisome troubles of the half-hearted. Then, after listening to you, I realized what a load of crap it was. Excuse me? I realized what a load of crap it was. You can't hate men just because they're different. You can't hate anyone just because they're different. You have to work with them. Luckily, I needed a moronically pretentious, overeducated, hair-lipped old harridan like you to show me how stupid I was being. I mean, we're all just people, and it's idiots like you who cause the problems in this world in the name of reclaiming some false ideal. I'm blabbering on and on about gender politics at rallies just so you can wear leather in public. Why, you misogynist! No, you're insane! You hate yourself because you're a failure. You're an appalling academic and about as intellectual as a hemorrhoid. Goodbye. Well, uh... <clears throat> uh... Well, it's nice to see my work has stimulated such healthy debate, don't you think? Uh, Michaela, she hated you. No, nonsense. Poor dear was in bits. Not very used to the cut and thrust of academia. I thought she expressed herself poorly and didn't know what she was saying. Probably burned her husband's cakes or something. It is important for me to confront the differences and similarities between myself and other women. I am smart, strong, I seek liberation. Your society imposes on me. God, this is all so confusing. Everything has two meanings. Exactly. Apart from the word through, which has five. You can choose to be a victim, Amy, but after you read my book, you'll realize men are irrelevant. Can a man have a baby? Do I need a man to have a baby? No, we don't need men. We need more parts of town we can call our own, more parades, more gatherings of understanding where women can beat each other with pillows and practice judo. That doesn't sound like fun at all. Oh, shut up. I've had enough of you, you little tart. That makes two of us. Right. Listeners, don't go away. When you come back, we'll have a new guest, and I promise they'll be more interesting than M- Michaela Crap Artist. Michaela, it's been a pleasure. I'm sure we've all found this very illuminating, and why our beliefs are right in the first place. We'll be back right after this. Love the dairy goodness, propel the toxic gas. Make that talk real low, suck it, have a blast. You can buy it anywhere, go to the star shop. Make sure that you're in a chair, cause your hair's gonna fly. Oh no! That's the sound I love. Giggle cream, it makes dessert funny. He was a man of peace, living on a quiet farm in North Dakota. Till one day, all hell broke loose. Tim, we need you. I'm a man of peace. I'm done killing. I want to raise a family. That's just it, Tim. They've got your family. No! Jack Howitzer is Tim in Exploder. From the heart of America to the jungles of Cambodia, follow one man's quest for peace. Hoochie Bat, is that you? Tim, I know you come. Just like old days, we kill everybody. Tim, they've got your wife, but I'm not married. You are now to America. He went in to save his country, but found his family and lost a friend. Hoochie! Tim, don't leave me. You taught me baseball, Tim, and how to rough. No! He would have been a fine American. I'll cry when I'm done killing. Get yourself a body bag. Strap yourself in. Start making friends the American way. Exploder. Evacuator Part 2. Rated PG. May include patriotic garbage. 
So, hello everyone and welcome back to K-Chat, Vice City's main place for things. I mean, well, it's a place in Vice City where things go on, like interviews or things. Or other things like that. But at the moment, it's interviews. And I'm Amy Schechenhausen, the best interviewer in Vice City and exclusive to K-Chat. Remember, you only hear Amy on K-Chat. Our next guest is a man on a mission. And that's why he's got such a silly name. His mission is simple. Zoos. His name is Mr. Zoo. G'day, Amy. Hi, Mr. Zoo. Hi, the name's Pat. Pat's.